Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Hannah Olson and I love sharing about homemaking, homeschooling, and motherhood content. And today is a different style of video. You can see maybe you are in my entryway actually here at our house and I wanted to share with you what our family's grab and go activities are. A little while ago on Instagram, I had asked if you'd be interested in seeing a more dedicated video to explain everything that is in our little bench here that has grab and go activities and the response was yes please. And so I wanted to just take you along and kind of pull out things and show you how it's been organized and what all is in here. So I actually do have another video here on my channel that has our older, it's an older version of our grab and go activities, but kids change over time. As kids get older, their interests might change and what holds their interest may also change. And so I have a freshly updated collection here of things that we like to bring along with us, especially when we go to a church, when we go to restaurants, or sometimes if we are, if we have a waiting room, like at the dance studio or even a waiting room at the doctor's office. So for a little bit of background before I turn this camera around, we have a six and a half year old girl, a four and a half year old boy, and a 15 month old girl. So we have a six year old, six year old, four year old, and one year old, and everyone is very busy and smart and loves doing all sorts of hands-on activities and they love coloring and things like that too so there's nothing wrong with just bringing a nice coloring book along with you but this is i wanted to share with you what our whole variety of activities are and we don't bring these out for fun just on any given day we make sure to keep them tucked away until it is time to actually go somewhere, maybe a longer car ride too, and that really helps to hold our kids' interests. Okay, so here is our little entryway. We've got uh, coats and stuff off to the right, farm boots, all the things. And I actually re recently reorganized the whole thing, but I'm sure you're not as interested in our shoes as you might be about what is in here. So this is a little cute bench that was a Facebook Marketplace find. And oh, it is so cute. I'm so glad we found it because we have a more narrow area right here between like this is the way the door opens and so this wall isn't super wide. We needed a smaller sort of bench and so this black one works perfectly. I think it's really cute with these little, um, what are these, kind of a faux, almost a church window from Kirkland's and so that has added a lot to this space but let's open it up and I can show you how it's all organized in here. So when this opens and I used to just have like a couple pairs of shoes in it this is a much better use of this space. When it opens up it kind of just looks like a lot but if I kind of look down this way you can see we've got multiple bins kind of dividing the different categories or types of activities. So let's start with what is in the back left here. I've got a long plastic container right here. This is where I'm storing all of our play pods. So play pods, I actually have a whole dedicated video about them if you are curious. They are great grab and go activity um, kind of pouches. I'm trying to find one that would be kind of fun to show you. But basically they are by a company called Sprinkle In Learning. This one is a pretend make your own cookies. So they've got cookie creation ideas. They have little, um, oops, did you see there's like little recipes here. It says what gems to put on each cookie and little pieces of felt that act as the frosting and then there are wood pieces. This has entertained my kids at a restaurant especially for a long time and there are little gems somewhere in here. Here they are. So little square gems and stuff like that. Really cute. So play pods, there are all sorts of different um, activities that come in play pods. Maybe I'll just direct you to my video that's all about them. And we do have a lot at this point because I've worked with the company and also have collected some with their sales and stuff over the years. So play pods are all kind of in a line back here. Okay, let's move to the right. In this next container down here, we've got water wows, as you can see. And also maybe as you can see, I have ripped off the front 
um, they come with like this raised area where you can keep your water wow pen. I actually always tear those off because I, it drives me nuts how they just like do not um, store flat next to each other when they've all got that giant plastic pouch. So I take that off. I also, in a not super neat way, I cut off the whole top because I think, were these too tall for this bench? Anyway, I just kind of hacked at that and that's fine, the kids don't care. And now we've got like a pirate water wow. These are just a water reveal pad. And then down here, I have a couple little bags of the water wow pens, just a snack size Ziploc bag. I have two pens in here because Sophie and Soren, my oldest two, are the ones who would really like to do water wow. And then two here. I used to store these with a little bit of water in them, but that kind of I don't know. I don't really feel that comfortable having water get super stale and old in those. So I will have to, like when we grab and go, the kids could maybe choose a water wow that they want to do at church that day. And then we'll quickly fill these up. It takes like one second to fill these up in the sink. So we do have a good collection of water wows by now. I don't think I've really thrown any away since, I mean, Sophie's six and a half. So that's what we've gotten over the years. So then let's move to the right here a little bit more. This little bin down here is uh, fidgets, basically. Things that you wanna um, do with your hands. So we've got these little, um, what would you call these? We kind of call them our little snake toys. They're just really fun to bend around. Oh, that was out of focus, I think, sorry. Um, they're just fun to manipulate and move around. Even my one-year-old likes these. We've got these little, what are these called? I can't remember. I love these. So if you remember those finger catcher, like a mesh finger catcher thing, um, it's kind of like those, but these are sealed shut, almost like they were um, shut or sealed with a glue gun. And the fun thing about these is there's a marble inside and it's really addicting actually to slide and squeeze that marble back and forth because it kind of expands slightly and stretches just, a, just enough. So we have several of these. These are another really great fidget even for like read aloud time. Some of these items might actually come out for homeschool time in the upcoming year. I just, I used to have these stored all over in our homeschool cabinet, but now I just really wanted our grab and go stuff to be easily accessible and organized and things not falling out of a cupboard. This has proven to be a really great way to store them because it really truly is grab and go, not grab from the side and have a whole pile fall down. This is like pick up and go, if you know what I mean. What else do we see here? We've got a little spinner ball that Soren, my son, likes. We have a little Etch-a-Sketch, which everyone likes. These were from a, an Etsy shop. They are a felt sewn maze. So there's stitching in between these different, um, I don't know, just a design of stitching here. And you can squeeze, it's hard for, to really show, but you can kind of manipulate and move a marble that has been sewn in throughout the maze. And so those are really fun for kids. I feel like this would be really good for a teacher to have in school too. Like these marble mazes and like these fidget things. Um, we also have, oh, down here are more of those, these marble fidgets. And we've got these pop it or, you know, bubble popping silicone things. These I got for fun actually for school because these are um, 10 frames. There are 10 in here so you can have your kids show or represent seven or something like that. And even Svea, our one-year-old, loves pop it kinds of toys. She actually got this one for free from the doctor the other day and she loves it. So that's in here too. We've got one of these. I truly don't know what this is called. Um, I had one of these when I was a kid. So these are fun too. And then finally, these are, I think these are called Penny Peg dolls. I'll show you. Okay, these Penny Peg dolls are so cute. Um, these are like hand painted. This was from an Etsy shop and I feel like I vaguely remember the Etsy shop closing. So hopefully it's not closed, but how pretty is this little, excuse my fingernail polish, but how pretty is this little doll? So this one is a set of four little girls in dresses and I got it for Sophie for I think Christmas one year and Svea really loves playing with these too. They're kind of, they're not that quiet for like a church toy or something, but maybe if you took them out of the tin. If the bench was a little bigger, I would have all these next things kind of all grouped together. But for now, or I guess with this bench situation, they're just filling in the 
kind of open space outside of the containers. In, and it's mostly these magnet types of activities. So right here, we've got a travel tin, a magnetic dress up. It's from a brand called Stephen Joseph. And this one has a cat and a bunny that you can dress. I guess I can show you what it looks like inside. As you can see, there's little, it's like a dress up doll, little magnetic pieces. Sophie has really liked this one, even in the car. Sometimes in the car you lose pieces, so this is good for like a restaurant too. Then we've got, let's see here, what do I wanna show you next? Magnetic book. There are several different themes or magnetic books. This is probably going to be messy because it is well loved. Um, this is a little magnetic um, back, backboard, I don't know. It holds open with ribbons, so this is actually it's pretty good for the car. Um, you will probably lose little magnets, little pieces at least, but it's it's been a fun one, like a lap toy basically. For Soren, he's loved it. They have cards with ideas about what kinds of vehicle you might want to create. And then there are tons of different, I'm obviously not good at designing a vehicle, but here's all the different pieces. Here's a propeller. It's really fun for him and he likes to show me, Soren likes to show me what new, I don't know, flying or boat kind of thing he has designed with this. So this is called Magnetibook. Then down here, I'll show you a couple more magnet things, but I might just um, pivot real quick to show you this. This is Svea's book. It's called Time to Brush, and it's by Henning Lolein, and I got it on Amazon. It has five reusable stickers. They are basically a thick vinyl type of reusable sticker and each animal needs to brush their teeth. They're kind of stored in the front there. Um, one thing I've learned when it comes to books like this is you don't really want to bend. Oh look, this is from our geo board. I will store that back with our school um, supplies. And this is, oh, what I was saying is you don't want to bend these, increase them too much, because then they won't stick as beautifully. But it's really fun to kind of, as you can see, show that the animals can try brushing their teeth. This is the one that is not for the bear. But anyway, you can see it kind of sticks on there. It's been a really fun little like church, church time book for Svea to play with. Along those same lines is the All Better book. I might like this one even more than the toothbrushing one because it's got cute band-aids and the band-aids are stored here on the left. Then let's find someone who has a boo-boo. Okay, this puppy has scraped his paw. It's not too graphic, it's just like a little pink scrape. And then your child puts the little Band-Aid on, and I think it's so cute. So, Svea has that one as well. Then we've got this construction site, Play Felt. This one I bought used from Half Price Books, I believe. It has, so this is like a slightly fuzzy, kind of a felt board, and up here are all the little um, felt Oh, sorry, I wasn't even uh, zoomed in there. Uh, up here are all the little felt pieces. So then your child can take like a, it kind of sticks. I, I don't know how well it sticks vertically, but they can kind of take the construction pieces. And I guess they recommend certain ones for each page, but I don't think we need to really follow that. And it stores quite well. It was just a cute little thing to find at Half Price Books. Then moving over here, we've got, I think I have three more magnetic things to show you. I just got this one at a garage sale for like 75 cents. And it looks like maybe an off brand or a generic brand of one that's $30. So I'm really pleased I found this magnetic farm. So this magnetic farm just basically has a couple, couple backdrops or backgrounds you can switch around, but mostly you're just putting like all the cute little farm elements in a farm scene. So that is a fun one to have. I was really pleased to find this. Next, we've got an Eric Carl. As you can maybe see, this is quite dented up from being used heavily over the years. Yeah, it's pretty dented, <laughs> but people still really enjoy playing with it. Basically, it's all the different Eric Carl illustrations you might be familiar with from books like Brown Bear, Brown Bear, and what's the other one? Um, the Very Hungry Caterpillar, stuff like that. So this has been a favorite, as you can tell, over the years. We still like that one. And then we've got, this one is fun. This is called Cats and Dogs. It's a magnetic travel game by Petite Collage, 
which is a, I think they have other fun petite collage magnetic little games or dress up dolls or something like that. But this one is basically just the game four in a row. It's a travel game. I've kept it around even though Sophie and Soren haven't used it like a ton in the past because they're starting to get to the age where during a road trip or something they might want to play a four in a row magnetic game together. So inside here you can see they've got little cats and little puppy faces and then this is the board where you play four in a row. So that's a cute little portable game idea. This is good. I think we've played this one at restaurants. Like I've played it with my daughter at a restaurant while we were waiting for our food. Okay, the next one is a little busy book or it says my quiet book. Let me get this unzipped. So inside this busy book, this is one I just recently got from a garage sale. It is missing the square, that's fine. Um, the Velcro still works and stuff, so it just has little activity pages. If you've seen something like this before, there's often something to button, to snap, to buckle. Um, there's a clock there. Oh, buckling pants. We've got little snaps for these balloons. Tie the shoe. Here's a little zipper. And then just a page to touch. And I, I just had to get this one. It was like, I don't know, 50 cents. This might be another off-brand type. Um, this was from a woman's garage sale and she was shutting down her daycare, but this off-brand, like if it's the true one, this was also like a $30 um, little soft activity book. So I was happy to find this one. And then I've got this little book for Svea. It's called Goodnight Baby Bear. It has a little baby bear who picks up his toys, I guess. He has a little bath. And then, whoops, you slide him into his little bed at the end of the day. This one was a little harder for her to kind of work it into, but Svea is only 15 months old, and she can do it together with me during church or something like that. So I have her little goodnight baby bear in here too. And then this final one, I saved what I think is the best for last, especially in terms of Svea's toys. So I want to show you this right at home uh, soft activity book. I love this one so much. Um, so it's basically about, it's called Ride at Home, it's about the different habitats or where different animals live and typically everything is stored in their little pockets. Um, there are eight actually, so the first four for the first four pages of the book are stored here in the front cover and then the last four are typically tucked into their pockets in the back cover of the book. So for this Turtles Lives in Shells page, this is a turtle without a shell, and so you just help him, whoops, get into his shell. Then we've got birds build nests and then Svea can just tuck this bird into the nest. The fish page is really fun because it's like a mesh pocket so you can see inside but it looks like a glass fish bowl so the fish can just swim in there. We also have a cow. The cow can go behind a fence. The bees Somewhere I have the bee. Um, the bees go in the honey hive, sorry, the beehive, and horse goes in the stable. The baby kangaroo gets carried in the pouch, and then the dog, this laying down dog, can go sideways here into the dog house. This is a really sweet book, and I feel like for a one-year-old, and even older, quite a bit older, it's really fun to match up where each animal's um, rightful home is, I guess, where their habitat is. It's really cute. So this one I found on Amazon. I will link everything down below that I had in today's video. One thing I wanted to be sure to mention was over here in our living room, we've got this big black dresser and this is where I store coloring books. I know it doesn't look super organized, but it actually is recently organized. And I've got a tall piece of cardboard here to act as a divider between my daughter's, Sophie's, coloring books and activity books that were specifically purchased for her or are her level and ones for Soren, our four and a half year old. And so the kids know that anything to the right is Soren's, anything to the left is Sophie's. It has helped a lot in terms of confusion when we're really trying to get out the door on time. And we do really love coloring books and activity books in our family. I'm not going to pull out every single one here to show you, but just a couple recommendations. We love books, these sticker books by Cupkin, and these are books that open um, extra wide, and the stickers you need for every page are to the left, and then the actual uh, scenery or 
page you're putting the stickers on is to the right, which makes it so much more understandable and easy for kids to do independently. So these Cupkin sticker books are great, especially for road trips. We love our sticker books by Brain Games. And you can see I put Soren over here just because sometimes they have the exact same one. This is called Sticker by Letter and Brain Games also has Sticker by Number. So depending on what your child is maybe working on or what they're able to do at that time, you can kind of get a Sticker by Letter or Sticker by Number. So Sticker by Letter, this looks like a lion. They have different little sections here on the page and your child uses the corresponding sticker page that has different letters. Um, for each little sticker and they get to put it right in the spot where it has that matching letter. Anyway, you probably get it <laughs> But yes, the brain game sticker by letter books and sticker by number books are awesome So I just wanted to show you that we do I do consider these part of our grab-and-go Activities I just have them stored in an unused a previously unused little part of our dresser here in the living room and that has been wonderful because now I can dedicate more space to our homeschool supplies over in our homeschool cupboard in the kitchen. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope it was fun for you to see all of our family's grab and go activities here in this little bench. I would love to hear what your family's favorite activities are when it comes to bringing things to maybe uh, do in church or at a restaurant or in a waiting room. It would be really fun to hear what your family's approach is and how you organize your stuff too. Did any of these stand out to you or do you have any of these already? I would love to hear. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to my channel here, especially if you are a mom or you love homemaking or homeschooling content. I am looking forward to sharing more, especially in terms of homeschooling in the future, but I really like to share a variety of topics all within those motherhood and homemaking realms as well. If you want more peeks at our day-to-day -day life, you can follow me on Instagram. It's at Hannah B. Olson, and you can also sign up for my email newsletter so you're notified of any life updates or new content and things like that. I do have an online course called the Present Mama Playbook, which is running a current session right now. So exciting because it's been recently totally refreshed and updated. It's been so much fun um, working on that and then also now seeing students go through the course. And you can sign up for the wait list down below in the description box for the Present Mama Playbook if you're interested. And you can also join my email list to stay up to date on things. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you're at, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys. Thank you.